Now after my previous video where I showed how do you calculate the fair value of a risky bond, now let's calculate the internal rate of return of a risky bond investment. Now of course this would seem quite uh, standard to you, okay, if you're looking, watching this for the very first time. But uh, for this topic or this reading, they may ask you to calculate the internal rate of return if the bond defaults, okay, during its life or at the expiration of the bond. So using the data from my previous video, okay, we are asked to we are now asked to calculate the internal rate of return of a three-year corporate bond, where the annual coupon rate is five percent, okay, and we'll calculate the IRR given that it defaults in year one, two, and three, and also calculate the IRR if it doesn't default. And we'll go with the same assumption that the hazard rate is 2%, the recovery rate is 40%, the risk free rate is flat at 3.5, and the market value of the bond is 100.6921, which happens to be the same value as the uh, as the fair value of the corporate bond, which I computed in my last video, which you can check out. Now, we have the same numbers here in this table, so we'll just make use of it. So first, I'll, I'll start off by calculating the IRR if the bond defaults in the first year. So if the bond defaults in the first year, okay, that means the amount that you will recover here is 43.1398. Okay, so in other words, uh, from here, year zero, you have year one, year two, and three. So you were supposed to receive uh, the cash flows, okay, from five, five, and 105. But if the bond defaults in year one, of course, you wouldn't receive this, these two cash flows. Okay, and then the exposure in year one is 107.8495. And if it defaults, you should be able to recover 43.1398, which includes the coupon. So you wouldn't, you wouldn't get this amount as well. So what you will get is 43.1398. And the amount that you have invested is uh, 100.6921. So if you use a calculator, Let's reset the T. Uh, let's clear the TVM. So your PV will be hundred point six nine two one negative. Okay, PV. Then uh, your uh, FV is what forty three point one three nine eight as FV. Your PMT is zero. Okay, and then N is equals to one since it defaults in the first year. So we then compute the IY and you get a negative IRR of fifty seven point one five six seven percent. Okay, so. In equation form, uh, this is how it looks like. We have 100.6921 equals to 43.1398 discounted at the IRR. Okay, to power 1. So this is where we get the IRR of negative 57.1567%. Alright, now let's calculate what if the bond defaults in year 2. So if the bond defaults in year 2, Okay, you will be able to then recover 42.5797. And of course, not forgetting that in year one, since it didn't default, you would have received a coupon of $5. And in year two, you will get 42.5797, which is the recovery amount. And there's nothing that you will receive in year three. And of course, here your investment amount is uh, 100.6921. So if you use the financial calculator, then using the same value of uh, PV, which is uh, negative 100.6921. Now we just have to change N to two, since there's two years now. Okay, PMT is equals to five. And then the future value. So we, the we use the cash flow worksheet here. So your CFO is uh, negative 100.6921, enter. Then uh, CO1 will be five. CO2 will be 42.5797. Okay, let's make sure there's no other cash flows here. So after that, we'll proceed to IRR. Okay, and then we'll compute. Okay, so we get negative 32.44%. So R is here is negative 32.44% if the bond defaults in year two. Now let's proceed to year three. Now, if the bond defaults in year three, you will be able to receive the coupon for the first two years. And then in the last year, when it defaults, you will get 42. So on the timeline, you will invest or you will buy the bond for 100.6921. Then you will receive $5 for year one and two and get $42 in year three. So in this case, your IRR can be calculated using the financial calculator. 
So go back to the cash flow worksheet. So your CFO is negative 100.6921. Then CO1 is 5. Okay, and then uh, we can set the frequency to 2. Okay, to replicate these two coupons. And then C02 will be 42. Okay, and then uh, there's no more cash flow after that. So going to IRR, press compute, you get negative 21.33%. Okay, so your IRR here is negative 21.33%. So you see the IRR becomes lower and lower after time, okay, if it doesn't default, if it defaults at a later time. Now, uh, of course, what happens if the bond doesn't default? Okay, this one assumes that it defaults in year three. Now, of course, if it doesn't default, then uh, we wouldn't have the 42, we will receive 105, okay, which is the last cash flow. Okay, so if it doesn't default, if there is no default, right, we will just get 105, okay, in year 3, and then $5 here, and negative 100.6921. So in your calculator, we will just proceed to the last amount, which is 42. I'll change this to 105, okay, go to IRR, press compute, you get 4.747%. Okay, so that's... Uh, so your IRR here will be 4.747%. So if you're asked to calculate, or this is what we call the yield to maturity of the risky bond. Now if you're asked to calculate the credit spread, okay, so the credit spread will be the YTM of the bond minus the risk-free rate, which is 3.5%. So you will get 1.2%. 47%. Okay, so there's about 125 basis points there. So that'd be the credit spread of this bond.